What's up guys, Tommy Bennett here, and today I'm on top of a black diamond run. So underneath here, it's pretty sketchy, it's pretty steep. So in this video, I wanna help you guys overcome and conquer steep terrain. Now make sure you stay to the end because we're gonna be talking about a lot of different tactics on how to navigate the run, how to make it more manageable, and overall just make the experience way more awesome. Now if you agree or disagree with anything I say, make sure you comment down below. All right guys, let's get started, let's go. First things first, sometimes when you're riding down the mountain, it's perfectly straight down, but most times you're on a mountainside and it's a little wonky, but if you read the terrain, you can actually find the less steep spots so that you can make your turns a little bit better. So first things first, look down, try to spot where you're going. That also means you gotta keep your eyes up and your chest up where as you're riding so you can navigate the terrain we're on right now is actually a bit of mogul run. So I'll give you like a tip here and there for that. But then we're gonna go somewhere else to actually find like a nice smooth run that you may encounter. So it, it, you'll be able to get kind of best of both worlds. So in this run, I noticed on the right side, the moguls are a little bit less gnarly as well as a little bit of a goalie. So I'm gonna go investigate over there. The biggest thing when it comes to riding steep terrain is that the longer your nose of your snowboard points down the hill, the faster you're gonna go and the more you're gonna accumulate speed. So what you saw there was I was minimizing the time my nose was pointed down the hill. So I spent a lot more time having my board across the fall line, which allows me to put the brakes on. I can lift up my toes, slow down. If I need to slow down faster, I lift up my toes and put the brakes on harder. If I don't need to, I can just kind of coast around and make it smooth. Minimize the amount of time you point that board down the fall line, it's just gonna be better. In addition to that, you wanna be in control like as much as you can. So if I make that toe side turn, right when I'm turning, I'm trying to manage my speed. Again, putting the brakes on more or less. But if I just let my board go, either it's uh, down the fall line or across the fall line, and then once I'm out of control, it's hard to get that control back. So don't lose the control from the beginning. Keep it as long as you can. It's kinda gnarly down here. So now you're like, okay, Tommy, sick, make turns, stay in control. But sometimes I feel like I make a heel side turn or a toe side turn, I feel like I'm out of control. One thing that's gonna help is you wanna have your lead shoulder in an anticipatory position. Now I'm not saying just throw your shoulders and drive the rotation with your shoulders, but more like let my lead shoulder point in the direction I'm going allowing my weight to be stacked over my toe side edge appropriately to make that turn easier. Toe turns are gonna be the most scary in this situation for most people because you make a toe side turn and you can't see what's underneath you. But make sure your body is a nice, stacked, strong position, your knees are bent and your shoulder and eyes are not looking that way as you're trying to go that way. And you're gonna see here in this video that I'm able to control my turns. That's a big deal is by having your body in the right positions, allowing you to make those turns way faster, way more responsive or keep the control. Allow your body to work together, not against each other. And if you're looking for a basic guide to how to do turns, check it out. Point that way, but that way, and then that way, and I'm not sure. So I ended up going to a different run so I can have a better example for you guys and Right underneath me, there's a really steep spot right here. Holy cow, pretty steep. But then if I go over to this side, it's a lot more mellow. So back to the point of reading the terrain. Heck yes, I can go send it down this if I want to and I'm feeling comfortable, but maybe I do that because I'm a little nervous. So read the terrain is a big deal. Video, these videos are way more fun if I got a friend with me. So today I got my boy, Sam. What's up guys? Sam is an instructor with me. He's a big nerd too. So he's got some very good talking points that uh, I think you guys got to hear. My biggest thing on steep terrain 
keeping that weight over that front knee so that we can initiate our turns nice and easy. And also making sure that we're doing, like Tommy said in the mogul run, early initiation with our shoulders. And what's cool about Sam is that his body type is so different than I am. I'm 5'5", five five, he's 6'3", he's going to move in different ways, but he's going to apply the same tactics. And I want you guys to see that. I talk about knee steering a lot, and uh, so is he. So it's a good thing. We're all on the same page. Let's go ride. Woo! And if you guys got any specific questions about helmets or goggles, DM Sam on Instagram because he's more than welcome to help you out. He's a big nerd when it comes to that stuff. He works at a shop where he they specialize in goggles, helmets, and he fits thousands of people a year on that kind of stuff. And he's got a bunch of good information. So DM him on Instagram. Tell him I sent you. And then you know, because we're boys, tell him and uh, he'll be able to help you out. So within that video, one thing that you guys are going to notice is that he had more of an open cell turn which means his board is going down the fall line but if you can hear the audio he's spending a lot of time putting those brakes on making the next turn putting the brakes on making the next turn so if you guys are looking to go a little bit faster while staying in control do what he did so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to some more close turns a little bit slower just so you guys fully understand what I'm saying The next thing I want to talk about, as we're making our turns, some of you guys end up being very tall, but when we're tall and we're scared on this terrain, we end up slipping out and falling. So what I would like you guys to do is think about taking your belly button or your center of mass and getting lower. And as you get lower, essentially you're gonna have your knees are in a more athletic position. You have a lot more ability to balance because you're not just tall and extended, as well as if you need to go if you need a slam on the brakes, you're in a better position to keep your balance. So I'm gonna show you some examples of really tall, not so awesome turns, and then some smaller turns, and then you guys tell me which one is uh, more functional. Let's go. Ooh. So you guys will notice on those first examples, I'm really tall. You're gonna notice that my board chatters a lot. When my knees are super extended, it limits my ability to handle or absorb the terrain. In addition to that, if you're like really extended like that, what ends up happening is if you're making a toe side turn or a heel side turn and your bindings are too big or the angle is too steep, you may actually make contact with your high back and cause you to slip out and fall because you don't have grip on your edge anymore, just like Sam would do. He's literally got like a size 46 foot on a little board and it, it makes things really challenging. But what you do to overcompensate that is get low, decrease your inclination or your angle leaning into the snow, but you're still gonna be able to get on an edge, but you're gonna have better performance, better agility, better ability to slow down, kind of a win-win. So if you guys are struggling with that and you look like the first example, really think about getting your belly button low. And I'm not saying get your shoulders low, I'm saying get your belly button low so your whole body drops down. Sam just brought up a very valid point. We actually got on a chairlift with a couple and we asked them what you guys struggle with. And one of the things the lady said was that she's uncomfortable going fast and then what do you do? So I'd love to be able to show you guys more of those fast turns and then how do I regain my control or how do I maintain control as I'm going faster? So with, I'm gonna go snowboard, show you guys and we'll talk about it. And the sun just came out. What up sun?
So what you guys saw there was I was allowing the nose of my snowboard to spend way more time going down the hill. As that happens, I'm gonna be picking up speed. Now, I can make carved turns and go faster and faster, or what I can do is I can do a skidded turn, which means my board will go a little bit sideways and I can manage how much I slow down, how much I'm putting my brakes on. If I wanna slow down a lot, I'll go fully across the fall line and lift up my toes and slow down, or I could just do a little 45, 45 degree turn and get a little bit. I also use my ankles a lot. By lifting up my ankles, I'll create more edge angle, which creates more friction, which slows you down. So you have these um, little micro braking that you can do. Do you wanna push the pedal slam down on the ground? Yeah, you can totally do that. Or do you put your pedal down just a little bit as if you're going around a corner, you know, just a little safety break. So those are definitely some options. And then when I really, really wanna stop, I turn my board fully sideways, lift up my toes, sink down, slam on those brakes, and, uh, and then we're good to go. All right, guys, hope I don't die. All right guys, so we're gonna end that there. If I missed anything, definitely let me know in the comments below because I can always make a version 2.0 of this video. Also, I have notifications on, on my phone. So every time you comment, I read them. I might not be able to respond to them, but I will read every single comment. So on that note guys, nothing but love, we out.